Hi, I'm Larry Richman for Film Snobbery, Indie Film Spotlight, and Pro Networks. And we're here at the Slamdance Film Festival in Park City, Utah, for the world premiere of Hank and Asher. I'm here with James Duff and Julia Morrison, and you are the co-writer and director. You are the co-writer, editor, and producer of this wonderful film. I loved. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, why don't we start out by telling the audience how you, the genesis of this project. Well, the genesis, Julie and I were teaching at a film school in Han, and we were trying to fit into a new culture, a new city, and we're quite isolated and lonely. And Skype and you know Facebook, they weren't really working. And we were both thinking about times in our lives where we had written correspondence, and you know you could put your thoughts on paper, really get your emotion out, and send it to someone in the anticipation of getting letters. And what would that look like in the digital world? And so we thought a video, and you're talking to a friend. And he told us that he courted his now wife through video messages on the road. And he offered to share them with us. And we said, oh, please do. <laughs> and they were embarrassing. Um, but what we found is they were surprisingly intimate. And, uh, and he seemed really vulnerable and is very interesting. And we actually stole a couple scenes uh, from that, from those ideas. Um, one specifically, though, he, he was at a concert and he had the camera on himself. And he panned, it's in Australia. And there's this big didgeridoo, like, oh, right, right, right. Fans back to yeah. him, and he kind of smiles. And if you're calling the club, scene. The club yeah. scene. Yeah. And uh, so, anyway, that's kind of the genesis. And, and we realized from him that it could work. Yeah. And, and your involvement began at the same time. And when did you decide, I think we can make a movie out of this? Um, well, we headed back. We were teaching in Prague, and we went back to New York just for the summer because we were getting married. <laughs> And, um, and we realized that we, if we wanted to make this movie while we had the opportunity in Prague, we didn't have a lot of time. So the whole nature of the produc production was designed, in a sense, to be able to execute it in a short period of time. And so we decided, as we were developing the story, that we just wanted to have the two main characters. And so we went back to New York, and we met with the casting director, and cast it, and came back. And about two months later, we were shooting it. So. <laughs> It was pretty quick. So this wasn't long ago? No, it was last fall. Last fall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're, you, you cast it, and then you came up with the script in collaboration with the actors? It was all kind of happening yeah, we at had, the same time. Yeah, we yeah. definitely had an outline and objectives for scenes. Um, but then I think, as Andrew said, it's just sitting down and fleshing out what each character, each person, actually not each character, each person brought to the role, and then fleshing out what was real, what was working, what was not working. And in shooting, we do a bunch of different takes, a bunch of different ways to, to offer different you know, ways of connection between the two of them. And so that's how it kind of developed. The, the progression of the narrative, did it change along the way based on you saw what was working and what wasn't working? Go ahead. Well, it changed a lot of different times. You know, as we were, we had some ideas for scenes that we realized as we were shooting were stupid or whatever, you know, weren't working. And so we scratched that and did something else. But also due to the nature of the correspondence, we recorded a lot more material than a lot more material than ended up in the final film. So the editing process was actually really exciting and dynamic because it's a very modular it could sort of material. Film, and so right? yeah. we cut yeah. a number of totally different versions of yeah. the film with different endings, you know, the whole thing. So so yeah. One of the things I love is it, it starts out they're just sitting in front of the computer and, and as a viewer I'm like, okay. <laughs> Can I watch this for 90 minutes? And, and then they, they're moving and he, they're showing each other's apartment and then they're outside and, and it becomes, for me, more than just love letters or video, you know, video pen pals. They're postcards mm -hmm. from Prague and New York and he's showing, this is my town and she's saying, this is my town. How did, how, was that in the original idea? Definitely. We conceived of it as postcards because we love New York um, and Prague is such a gorgeous city. And I'm a huge food lover. And I don't remember the food montage. Oh, yes, like, yes. That was the greatest day. So Everybody we were, does that. They show what they're eating. I know. <laughs> and then we spent a whole day with Andrew shoving hot dogs and oysters <laughs> and everything down his mouth. But we live on the Lower East Side and we wanted to show our neighborhood. And not necessarily things that are typical, things that maybe aren't so typical. Yeah. And we wanted to kind of share that with people who see a side of New York that you know a lot of people probably haven't seen or would like to see. And as well as Prague, we didn't kind of go to the typical sites. We kind of wanted to show different parts of Prague. Now, did she uh, or 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 Andrew? Did did either of them say, you know, there's this great spot I know about. I think it should be in the film. Well, we invited both of them to outside of what we had structured 
to um, suggest other places to shoot or other um, other things that they thought the character might want to say to each other. And so we did shoot a number of scenes that were directly from from their ideas. Now they were obviously not in the same room, <laughs> and and it wasn't shot in sequence. So keeping track of of what's going the continuity. Did you ever find at a certain point that you ended up juggling? Yeah, well, interesting because in, in a way it was all about the emotion and what we were striving for is the emotion in each scene and in the end that's all that really matters. Yeah. And in terms of, I think you can get too much in your head of trying to match things right. and I think that's where you, you could have gotten in trouble. But we really were focused on, okay, what's the emotion and, and the trick was creating chemistry between these two people mm -hmm. on different continents. And I think that's kind of how we tried to do it. Yeah, a lot of the cultural, I love the, the references, you know, we learn a little bit about Indian culture in there. How authentic was that without giving anything away? Well, we worked in co collaboration with the actors from here at Kakar, um, in addition to some of our Indian friends, and we definitely talked to a lot of people to, um, to make sure that we were getting it right. right. And um, our caterer actually on our set in New York, who is a film student in New York, who's Indian American, she watched an early cut of the film and said that we got it right. So oh, that's great. Sure. And yeah. Mahira is from born and raised in India, in Calcutta, yeah. and so yeah. and, and it's obviously a huge element of the film. Otherwise, it's just okay. We've seen this before. <laughs> just two people across uh, across the ocean. Talk about the cast. Well, we wanted to cast uh, New York theater actors be specifically because of the improvisation style. And so we hooked up with a really great casting director who specifically cast theater. And he described kind of what we wanted. And uh, he just went out and found two gems. You know, but the, the casting process was very much about kind of we create scenarios and let the actor come up with a story. And Andrew told this great story about Buddy Holly. It was just, <laughs> we were all hanging on every word, every word. He talked about this club, and then he said, oh, then in walked Buddy Holly. And we all looked at each other like, just make up that whole story. <laughs> and so we, we wanted storytellers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Once, once you had them in place, where, did you have rehearsal time? Um, not especially. We just talked a lot. And then the hero, when she came out to Prague, we sat down, you know, sat down with her for a day and, and discussed all these things. And a lot of it was actually kind of on set or the night before, like after shooting, we would sit down and go over the next day's work. And so we could plant ideas in both Andrew's and Mahir's head about what you know we're striving for. And so they could sleep on it and then we'd kind of go over in the morning and then just start shooting. And how structured was it if there was a given uh, love letter segment of uh, two minutes? Was it a situation where, okay, this is what you're going to do and you're going to do it in two minutes? Or was it, okay, run with it and maybe they went on for ten minutes and cut it down? Well, we. We actually have a draft of the script where we sort of estimated how many minutes, you know, we thought each of the scenes that we had sketched out would be, and we were completely wrong about all of them, you know, the ones we thought would be short and being long and vice versa. So we, we at some point, we sort of just decided to run with it, knowing that we could decide later, you know, in the editing room. It was, it was too hard to, to try to cram it into any um, strict structure. But at the, at the same time, because we were working with objectives and specificity that, so so they wouldn't ramble, you know, to keep them focused on what was needed out of each scene, because otherwise, with improv, you can really start going off in all these different directions. Mm -hmm. I was kneeling on the floor with a stopwatch. <laughs> yeah, and I if, it, like, if it went over a certain length, I was like... Well, you, you got it right. What, one of That's one of the things that impressed me the most, is it really moves along. You don't get the sense that, okay, we've seen enough of that, let's move on. It, it, it does flow really well. Thank you. Thank you. It, 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 one, of the, one of the decisions that you obviously made was to not have this look like a found footage film shot with cheap handheld video yeah. cameras. It looks like a movie. Yeah. Uh, when did you make that decision? How did that, and what cameras did yeah, you use? Yeah, well, actually, we kind of experimented. We thought, well, maybe since you know, they're out on the street, we use cell phones. And we tested them, and we didn't want that. We didn't want the found footage. We've seen it. We've seen it. It looks like crap. People want to see good pictures. Right. And it's and a romance. Yeah, it's a romance. And you, want to, you know, like, that, what we're now familiar with that look is also right. more the horror genre or right. whatever, and, like, it, it just didn't feel yeah. right. And you need to heighten it, and probably you need to heighten the craw and make it look right. really beautiful. And they're two filmmakers, and so it really made sense that they would yeah. carefully compose their messages. And you elevate the level because you, you begin with the Skype, and you're on the computer, and then it's as if... They're expanding as their relationship expands. So is sort of the production values of the film, and and I just thought that was beautiful. And it's so seamless. You don't realize, you know, at, at some point it's like almost like a traditional narrative. <laughs>
great. Well, that in the end, that's what we wanted. Yeah. It's, it's a love story in the end, and that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. I mean, it's a sweet story between two people falling in love. Yeah. I think people would be surprised as it goes off in different directions, I think, than it's certainly than I was expecting. Uh, once, once you got it in the can and, and you kind of knew you had it right, where did you want to take the film? How did you end up here? Slam Dance. Well, uh, Slam Dance is probably one of the best places we can premiere because it, you know it's a festival by filmmakers for filmmakers, and it's blind submissions, and we're in you know Park City, and they really take care of their filmmakers, and we really feel like it's probably the ideal place for us to premiere. Now, now I asked Andrew a similar question. You're a filmmaker, and in the film, Andrew uh, Hank is a filmmaker, and he shows his film at a film festival, mm -hmm. and a fan who's an, an aspiring film student writes to him and they begin this relationship. Uh, maybe I should ask you, <laughs> what if that happened here? Well, I don't know if I should say this or not, but when we were developing the thing, the, the idea for the film, we went on our separate ways one afternoon <laughs> and recorded um, video messages to each other. And I'm way too self-conscious of a person to, to lose myself in that. Um, so I didn't think mine were very interesting. <laughs> But of course, mine were super interesting. <laughs> <laughs> we still got married, so they do work. <laughs> well, well it, it, and the movie works. And James oh, Duff, Julie you. Morrison, the world premiere of Hank and Asha here at the Slam Dance Film Festival. And folks, watch for it. Thank you.